So today I would like to do uh, two things. First, I would like to, to get to the, to the end of the discussion that uh, at this fourth order, the, the water wave system is integrable. So I would like to do the calculation because it's, it is quite uh, f f very special. So that was the first thing. So I would like to finish uh, uh, so the uh, uh, integrability. One, this is what I would like to do of uh, water waves at fourth order. Okay, so continuing the calculation, maybe a little bit less details, but still. Then I would like to use this framework, uh, uh, maybe not to the end, but at least uh, to, to derive uh, from the water waves uh, the NLS equation. So that was a program, uh, you know, two days ago we derived from this uh, Hamiltonian uh, framework, Boussinesque and KDV. So the other, the, I mean, there are many, many other scalings, but one of the important scaling is the NLS scaling, which is this modulational uh, scaling. So this is what I would like to do. And then I will move, uh, 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 I will move to, the, to the slides, and I would like to illustrate so NLS, and not only NLS, but a higher order NLS, NLS, which is called DIST equation. Okay. DIST is, was, is, a, is a mathematician from Norway who has worked on this, this derivation, so he proposed a higher order. And after that, I would like to, to, to continue on, this, on, the, um, on the slide and illustrate uh, illustrate and discuss this approximation, in particular to validate, validate numerically the approximation of a solution of the original water wave problem by uh, this uh, solution approximated uh, in this scaling by comparing the by preparing well our initial condition and, and comparing the solution of the, the full uh, water wave problem to that to the solution of that predicted by these models and to make it a little bit more interesting i will i will um, I, I will consider i will show a picture of the 2d uh, for the 2d water wave 3d water waves and also what 2D water waves plus with vorticity, constant vorticity. And this work, there were uh, the numerics in particular were done by Philippe Guyenne and uh, my collaborator, my young collaborator, Adi becker -Jean. Okay, so that's the program. S so we return to where we finished last yesterday, which was, we, <laughs> <laughs> we had, we had ma our Hamiltonian in eta C variables, and we expand near small, for, for small f data, for small functions, we have an expansion that, that follows the expansion of the Dirichlet-Neumann operator, and we introduced this method of normal forms that allowed us to make a change of variable. And this change of variable uh, led, that was canonical, and it led to a situation where the, the new H, new H, so I'm going to drop the, the, pr the prime in a minute, but just not to, f not to be confused, the new H is the old, well, the H2 is written in, in the eta prime, plus a, a fourth order term, so this is plus, plus, plus. The, so this, in this new variable, this a, a third a cubic term does not exist, but the, the fourth term exists, and of course, this change modifies the H4. So the way it modified was a uh, kind of nice way. Uh, I think I had the, this little index upstairs.
but uh, so the uh, what we meant was um, new and this new h new so now now we drop okay and we drop the drop the the t the, p the drop but of course these we can't once once we want to do the numerics and and compare we will have to undo all these transformations so we'll have to be careful but uh, at this level i leave it like this and it's it it becomes the old the same formula but modified by uh, Oops, it has to be in the good order. And eta tilde is the Hilbert transform of, of eta. Okay? So that was quite a, a, a nice formula, but we are back to our first uh, setting. Now we have a new Hamiltonian. Uh, can we again get rid of all this non essential nonlinearity? and keep all resonant terms if they exist. Okay? So, uh, the first thing, so little proposition, is that this, this requires uh, some calculation, but this new, uh, once you, you, you go back to the definition of H4, which means go back to the definition of the Dirichlet Neumann, I mean, of the expansion of the Dirichlet Neumann operator. It's a little lengthy calculation, but one finds that this new Hamiltonian, this, uh, okay, okay, this, so this, this H4 new, which is the old, old, well, I think we had this terminology the other day, so, this new H4 has the following form that I'm going to write. It's not very complicated. It has a, a, co a coefficient that I'm, I'm going to, cal to write down immediately. And then, so it's sigma of, so it's a sum of a K1 plus K2 plus K3 plus K4 equals zero. So that does not surprise us. It's a fourth, it's a, it's a, it will be a, uh, it comes from product of uh, and they are with with quartic terms, so there will be a coefficient that I will give write in a minute, and then k one, k four, and then c k one. So I write it in Fourier. X, eta k two, eta k three. That's Fourier Fourier coefficients. Okay, and and um, what is d1, d2, d3, d3? So it's a combination of this k, but it yeah, h4 new. Thank you, new and and it is so it's so okay. There is a coefficient, but what is interesting is that we have uh, these two terms that I'm writing now that shows that the sum is not for all k1, k2, k3. K4, it, it, it is, this shows us that it reduces to K2, K3 with the same sign, K3, K4 with the same, K1, K4 with the same sign, same sign. Okay, so that reduces quite a bit the, this, this sum, and then there is another large coefficient, it's not too important. Uh, you can one okay. I just write it, but immediately you s maybe it's it's uh, okay. I write it. We can comment about it because of this symmetry. I mean, there is a lot of playing with interverting uh, uh, indices, indices. But I write it. I won't write this only once. <laughs> only once. I write it like this so we see the symmetries. See, because 
This is symmetric in K1, K in, in 2 and 3, this is in 1 and 4. And so you see, if, I, if you want, you can write, you could write, remove this and write a 2. Because we know K1 plus K2 plus K3 equal, plus K4 equals 0. And you can do the same here if you like. Uh, oh, there is no 2 here. All right. So what is it we can do to try to eliminate non-resonant term? Well, we do as we did before. We have to be in the appropriate coordinates. So we'll be able, so we look, f we look for a, a Hamiltonian that will satisfy So that was the same equation, we had it at third order, but now we, we are one, one degree higher. It, it's the same, in the same type of formula. So H2 is, we know H4 is here, and K4 is that new Hamiltonian, if we can find it. So uh, it, it is complicated, but we have observed that if we work in this complex symplectic coordinates, this can be diagonalized. Right, because we know is that, that uh, so we have a le uh, s uh, we have a lemma that is kind of similar to the what we had before. It is that um, if if we uh, uh, calculate the Poisson bracket of K one, so I take I take one combination, but. Uh, you, you imagine that for k, when uh, with this expression, we from the sig eta we go to the z, so there will be all sort of combination of z1, z2, z3, z4, with a plus, with a minus, with a, with a bar, etc. But the good thing is that if I do this Poisson bracket of these two uh, functionals, k1, k2, k3, k4 are fixed, I get exactly like before. Multiplied by the same mo monomial ZK1, ZK2, ZK3, Z minus K4. So these complex symplectic coordinates diagonalize this coadjoint operator with H2. Okay? So, because of this, uh, this uh, relation, you, we, we will find K3, uh, K4 by doing the following recipe, if you like. We first write H, write H4 in terms of Z, ZK, Z bar K. We, so we have a large combination of terms, all possible terms, and, for, and we do it term by term. For each term, we see if we can... Uh, uh, we, we so, for example, we have a, a certain coefficient, f1, f2, f3, f4, of this. That k1. We have a coefficient like this, and we say, well, uh, this should be equals to uh, uh, omega 1 plus omega 2. I don't write, uh, I mean, I write it a little bit more compact. And the same coefficient, right? So we will be able to um, k3. You, you see what I mean? We just identify. but. Are we able to identify always? That's the question. So the question will be, this is possible if, so if there are no resonances. And reson so we will say that the quartet, K1, K2, K3, K4, is resonant if K1 plus K2 plus K3 plus K4 equals zero, because this uh, this expression are all done under this constraint, 
And uh, so this, this thing will be possible only if we do not have quartet that satisfy so omega k1 plus or minus omega k2 plus or minus omega k3 plus or minus k4 equals 0. So are you OK with me, this? It's exactly like before, but it's at, at, the, f at the next order. But unlike, unlike uh, the case of three, uh, three wave numbers, for quartet, you can immediately find imme uh, uh, trivial ones, right? So if, for example, if I take, so there are, there are resonant terms, res resonant quartet, and uh, you, so this is, yesterday I forgot the square root, but I think many of you noticed, right? This means, so can you guess the, the trivial ones? The trivial quartets? If I print two equals and two are equal, they, that gives that. So there are two types. These are the generic quartets. Generic quartets is when you do, for example, k1 minus k1, k4 or minus k4. Okay? For any k1. Pardon? Uh, pardon? Generic resonant, resonant quartet. Because if I take, uh, I take uh, k1 equals k1, k2 equals this, k3 equals 4, but you also you can play uh, uh, with, uh, uh, because they, they go two by two, right? So you can play with the other one. So k1 vir comma minus k4. Minus k1, k4. Okay, so these are generic. We can't really get rid of them. They are, will be always there. And the other, the other one, they are special. And I will write them down. So it, it, it consists in taking for omega, uh, for, Q, for k1, k2, k3, k4. So n, n is an integer. n plus 1, n square, n plus one square, comma, minus n2, no, n2. If you take this and the corresponding omega, so the omega are n, o omega is multiplied by square root of g, but we don't, we don't really care, n, n plus 1, n, n plus 1, minus n2 plus n plus 1. Okay, so for any n, these are called, uh, these are called Benjamin Fear uh, resonances. But uh, you see, these are special. Well, you can check, well, not now, unless I made a typo. But uh, uh, they are special because they concern a situation when you have three wave numbers positive and, the neg and, the and one negative. Okay. But this type of uh, combinations of three positive and one negative or three negative, one positive, does not appear here. So what we can s claim is that our first normal third of the normal form erased or removed this uh, very special uh, Benjamin Fian resonance. So they do not appear. They do not appear. So, but the other ones, they do appear. So the, w w the other ones, well, what does that mean? It means that for all k except these combinations, we will, we will eliminate the fourth order. And we have to, to keep those we did not eliminate. So I will not write the, exec the formula for K4 because it's quite complicated, but it's explicitly calculate. We can calculate it. But maybe more interesting, I will calculate. I will write the uh, the new Hamiltonian. 
So, uh, so I will uh, let's state what we have observed. So after performing, after performing uh, a fourth order Birkhoff normal form that will be associated to this operator K4. <coughs> uh, um, the new system, the new, the new Hamiltonian, so it's again new variables, has the form. Well, what do we do? We take the H4 that we have transformed into these new variables and we restrict ourselves to wave number of those forms. And then again, there is a calculation that is a little bit heavy, but it is still uh, possible because we can write it down. So this H new prime, H new prime, it's the, H, the old H2, H2 we don't touch. So which is, maybe I'll write it, omega k, z k. And what remains here is one fourth So here we sum over k, <coughs> zk4 plus z minus k4 uh, plus minus 4 zk, z minus k. And there is another term. But you see what is, what is uh, remarkable, there is the, this z appear only with the absolute value, and that will be the, the main reason why we will, we will show that for each k, absolute value of zk is conserved in time. So let's, let's finish writing this. k1, because we can, you can regroup, there are a lot of symmetries, so somehow one can regroup terms. But unless I we write it, we don't we don't uh, see their form. Okay, so that's the last long long expression. Mm. That sometimes I write four, but I mean that k four, that k four, k square. So that's the formula. And we, re we remember that the system is dtz equals i, or ddzk, equals dh nu, now, nu prime, dz bar, k. OK, so that's the new h, h4, the new h. And if we write this equation, we see what, what do we see? So let's take uh, zk. Uh, oops, no. Z dt zk equals i with a differentiation with respect to bar. A z bar. Hmm? Apparently, not. E no. But you know you can you have a lot of symmetries if you want to put uh, you can that's why uh, we cho choose k4 plus you could sum over all k if you k1 and k4 but you can regroup them it's not so important but what is important is that when you differentiate with respect to, so let's let's see what happens if you differentiate with I fix k okay fix k and I differentiate with a bit respect to zk bar. Uh, and there is an i here. So I get omega k, zk, zk bar. And here, uh, so I differentiate with respect to zk bar, so this k must be the same k, so it's um, essentially something like that. Okay, because of the form, I differentiate with the bar. But even here, well, let's take a simple one. 
uh, I differentiate this one. It's when k1 is equals to k, it gives you also terms of this form. So you see that for each k, that's all this uh, uh, action for all k, oh, dzk dt, or dzk dt, equals zero. Uh, dz, sorry, I'm sorry, it should not be two, il faut pas exagérer. <laughs> Zk of t, I want, so, okay, yeah. Sorry, I want, this is what I want to say. Because I multiply, when I, if I want to calculate d dt of this, I multiplied by z bar. When I multiplied by z bar, they disappear. So that means that all, uh, all actions for all k, zk of t, is independent. So that's why the, uh, and in particular, all Sobolev norms, of uh, z hmm? of z of uh, are conserved so that's in the sense that it is integrable ah yes 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 yes, yes, yes. because uh, that's what that see i should have said integrability uh, up, uh, up, uh, up to fourth order uh, yeah thank you but it's a quite a remarkable property. So in the original paper of Zakharov and Dyachenko, the, uh, they almost thought the water wave was integrable. The, the title is, is water wave integrable? But uh, in fact, it is not. But it is still pretty, pretty nice. Okay, and one can define action and, and, and uh, variable of actions and, and uh, angle, but it's a little bit long, so I will stop here for this discus discussion and uh, maybe uh, move to uh, to this part <laughs> okay mm. yes there is a formula uh, i did not uh, i have it it's a kind of long to write, but uh, uh, no, I don't have, I don't write it. But uh, it was uh, yeah. <laughs> there is a formula. Uh, no, no, you, 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 it is not, uh, it is not, uh, I, I just write one term, it will be easy to comment. Uh, it is not a Fourier multiplier, if you like. So I just write uh, one term, so is, it's okay for, because the second term. So it's again the sum, like we said, one plus k1 plus k2 plus k3 plus k4. There is this uh, d1, d2, d3, d4, which was uh, this, uh, but there was a, uh, it, this is a f f I wrote it a minute a few longer. But what is what is a little bit less nice is that it has um, k1 k4 minus k2 k3. But yes, so it is it is for the k1 k2 k1 plus k2 plus k3 plus k4 that are not resonant, that, that do not make this zero. And then uh, k1, k4 plus... So, since you asked me in, uh, in this paper that I had with, with Walter Craig at the time, we were interested in showing that the transformation that goes from these old variables to those after the fourth normal form is bounded in any Sobolev space. But we, went, we always, I mean, whatever we tried, we, we always lost one quarter of a derivative. So it was not successful, but there is still a formula. So 
that's uh, so that's how the team the team of Berti they 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 uh, had the point of view that these transformations are very useful, but you have to combine them with other uh, other things, which is in fact choosing the good variables to to obtain to to write down estimates uh, to write down energy estimates. Okay, so. Hmm? Uh, <laughs> je, uh, uh, I think it is proved that they are, that's the only one. There are no other. No, I mean these ones are simple, but there are no other ex than those written here. Of course, you can multiply by constant, eh? but uh, you can multiply all those by constant. Uh, I'll check. I'll check if I find a place where it is. Uh, it is stated, probably in in uh, in these two papers that arrived at the same moment. The one with Walter was much more detailed than that of Zakharov, <laughs> which was three pages. <laughs> okay, so maybe I'll, I'll take uh, uh, ten ten minutes or so to to because we already have all the material. I would like to. Be using this transformation to um, to obtain from the water wave problem uh, uh, the the nonlinear Schrodinger equation. So uh, we, we we derive this uh, this uh, formula, if you like, uh, uh, by hand, right? And it was uh, calculation. So. Everything that I presented using this Fourier mode in a, in a periodic setting are still valid when we work on the whole line. So after the third, after the third order normal form, Birkhoff normal form, uh, we I, re I rewrite again that our new Hamiltonian is H2. Plus, well, this h nu, right? It, uh, and let's let's write it again because it's important. So it was Hilbert transform of h. And now I would like to introduce an, uh, an, an expansion, uh, 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 a scaling. So the assumption, so the on that, if you like, or the choice of scaling is that I'm going to assume so that we can write also in terms of these. The on that is to say that uh, Z of uh, I'm going to write it I'm going to write Z as a function, which is a function of x and t, well, I'm going to, sup to write it as a form of a, a slowly modulated monochromatic wave. So it's going to be small because NLS is in a, in, in a weakly, weakly nonlinear setting, and it's going to be uh, like a, a monochromatic wave, so k zero fixed, fixed, and multiplied by a slow a slow amplitude slow modulated an amplitude slowly modulated okay so that's the on that and i'm going to put this on that in this in this uh, uh, truncated hamiltonian in this truncated hamiltonian up to fourth order and expand in epsilon so there will be essentially two, if, if I go back to uh, H2, H2 was, uh, so now we are talking about integrals. So if you remember omega, omega is a dispersion relation, so it's a squ square root of GD.
because because uh, when I, when you know when we we were able to f when we w that's uh, theoretically yes but in fact when we calculated k3 uh, earlier it has a very special explicit form it was uh, eta what was it eta square so and we were we we had case we we were able to s to eliminate all terms uh, the denominator never vanished never vanished so it is not it's not a proof but it it was possible to calculate so that was good enough to do this calculate the, the asymptotics and z so here what do we need to replace we have to replace z by this so in particular we need to understand what is the effect of a Fourier multiplier on a multiple scale function. So last time we studied how to, to we had an expansion of, uh, of a Fourier multiplier acting on the function along on as uh, depending on the long waves. Here it's a multiple scale but it is the same idea. So one can uh, uh, write one can write uh, an expansion. So uh, this the H2 is going to be um, so it's U bar omega and we're going to expand essentially dx plus uh, epsilon dx, like if we were uh, doing because um, the exponential, they disappear, they cancel each other. So that will give integral of u bar. So there, there is a theorem that, that uh, deals with this. Maybe I will write in a minute. Um, mm, I maybe I, I will write it, but in in practice, so we need to go at least to this order. U bar, and uh, the theorem that uh, I am uh, think that uh, that is a generalization of the one that we we earlier we did last time was to say that assume that m of d is a Fourier multiplier. Okay, of or let's say of order m, and we want to understand its action on. We want to understand its action on the function u that depends on x and epsilon x. And there is a, a, a there is an expansion in epsilon. That's. So the proof is just going back to the definition of Fourier multipliers. Mm -hmm. uh, D capital X, uh, one over I, uh, J, U. of u different okay x plus a reminder and like the other time there is an estimate for the reminder in in appropriate norms uh, but it takes a little bit of time to to write the the, the uh, so i write with hp and hq but well it's not exactly and then a certain norm of u with respect to these two variables, so I don't write it because it needs needs a little bit of definitions, but there is a, a, a precise setting like that. Okay, so we do this and we do also, so that's an expansion of H2, then we have an expansion of H, H4, and H4, the two H4 are relatively simple. I will add that. So where is it? I'm just going to write that. 
okay so it's it starts with h4 and it has u4 and it has coefficient and if i want to do nls that's enough but if i want to do one order higher i would have to write the next term So it's a little tedious, but it's the same calculation because this so this operate this this H4 involves derivative that will have to apply to uh, or Fourier multiplier that apply again that will apply to uh, like here to two to multi multi scale multi scale functions. Okay, I write this, but I promise you that's uh, the end of the big formulas. And uh, the H4, for the H4 of eta c, c and the H4 of eta tilde c, well, this comes with a, so it's epsilon 3. This one comes with a minus sign. This one is the same, but it has an extra term. And this extra term is non local. So I write it because it's interesting, because it's indeed, we will see that at some uh, x square, uh, something is missing. There is a u, it has to be, has to be quartic. So I think it's uh, I'm missing something. So you see, d dx, it's absolute value of dx, so it's non-local, acting on u square. And I'm losing, have lost something. Uh, hope to find it in another. The, this term is the same that comes here, right? These terms come here with a, with a minus sign. And and this one is an additional term. I think there is a u square missing, but I don't know if it's u bar. Maybe this, uh, maybe uh, maybe that. I will find it in a minute because it has to be quartic anyway. So it has to be something like that. Mm -hmm. No, no, it's correct. Okay, so it's u square dx u square, and uh, so that's a new Hamiltonian. So we always think as a derivation, we have equations, we do, we have the original equation, we do transformation, transformation, transformation. We look each time how this transformation modifies the symplectic operator. And uh, keeping track of this transformation, we have an equation for u. And the equation for u will be, will be exactly NLS. So I just this, and uh, so we'll have dtu because this is again another transformation from from z to u so the the equation will be minus i there an epsilon coming up and then dh du bar so this is the h the h is the sum of u2 uh, h2 h4 and h4 and h4 okay and maybe now i write i write the equation the the dist equation the analysis equation so u2 h2 will give a linear term but this linear term we can get rid of it by ch fa phase change change of phase okay so this will be eliminated then we have a uh, Another linear term that comes from the group velocity, it can be eliminated by change of variables. And now we have uh, the usual term that we know. One is uh, one half, second derivative, that's the dispersion, that's the NLS dispersion. Uh, 
so if I continue at the level of NLS, epsilon square minus I, okay, mm three, so I hope it's not too many typos, but that's the usual NLS, okay? That's, that's the term that comes from this, and this term comes from, from the first term, they add up, but if you want to go further down, you go. You have a term of the epsilon cube that will have that will have a third derivative, crack, 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 k zero. D. That's a higher order dispersion, and then we'll have. So I'm go not going to write all the coefficients, but uh, I will just write the the type of terms. So there is a coefficient. And then there is another coefficient here. So it's an i. We can't get rid of this i. Right. Uh, maybe I've forgotten i. No, no i. OK. This is an i. Uh, there is a coefficient. And then this uh, u. So this is a non-local term. OK. So uh, when I Pardon? Which one? Yeah. This one? Uh, no, this is, I did not put an E here, an I here. So there should be, uh, uh, but there should be an I. There should be an I, thank you. So there should be an I. Okay. And, um, okay, but uh, you see, this is non-local. So what I was saying that we can get rid of this, by change of phase, we can get rid of that by change of coordinates, and uh, this epsilon can be moved with changing time, uh, the going to the Schrödinger time. So we end up, up with d t d tau, d u d tau, sorry, having the Schrödinger equation plus correction. So that's called the dist, and this derivation of dist has forced uh, this, new, this equation has a Hamiltonian, it has, a con it has an energy. But the, the original uh, DIST equation that was derived by DIST in 79 is not Hamiltonian, so it's a bit different. It has an additional term. So uh, after the break, we can, uh, I will show you some numerical simulation that compare the old DIST and this Hamiltonian DIST. They are comparable. I mean, it's not that um, one is much better than the other, but it's interesting to, uh, to compare and to that's a validation of the models and that's also a way uh, to see if, you we if one wants really to keep uh, the, the Hamiltonian uh, conserve quantity, that has some advantage. Okay, I'll just do that. Okay, so so the, uh, so I will do that on the on the on the machine. There. <laughs> so it will be just a little bit easy. Okay, so it's okay. The time <laughs> here. I just want to uh, show you some. It's a little bit of discussion about this, and uh, and some numerical simulation to validate the, and to put it a little bit in more co in more context. So. Originally, that was the, that was after Sakharov in '68 derived NLS for deep water, and then there was uh, Hazimoto Ono who derived NLS for uh, finite depth. Dist proposed a higher order, <coughs> and this is he used you know classical method of multiple scales, and he obtained this equation. So fortunately, the equation is still there. So don't worry too much about the coefficient. So this is NLS. So let's look at the extra terms, the, the, the cubic. Uh, so you see the, the, there is a, an extra term, there is this one, that does not appear in the Hamiltonian, transform, Hamiltonian uh, uh, derivation, but it doesn't mean that one or the other is wrong. Uh, the, these quantities A, that he calls A, don't uh, represent the same, uh, the same quantity. Because for, for in this in this context, A is the amplitude of the wave of the of the interface of the of the surface wave, but here U comes from many transformation by. It's me who does this. 
Okay. <laughs> <Because> <coughs> so it does not it does not deal it does not deal with the same quantity, so it might not be su surprising that it's that has an extra term. Well, whatever. So that's why but you see what is important is this term which is non local. And this is the signature, people call it the signature of this uh, this equation because it is non local. And apparently in, in some observations uh, where people have tried to, to fit NLS or DIST on, on, uh, on experiments, they observe that DIST can capture some features that uh, the NLS does not. For example, sometimes the bending of the, of the curve of the... Uh, okay. okay, and then it, it, it is quite classical. People have used it a lot because especially, especially in, many, in many fields, in many situations, because it's because it's more efficient, so in to describe waves that are particularly large, so it has been extended to many cases, uh, gravity capillary, 3D, etc. And and even in, in two dimension in 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 3D, which means a 2D the, uh, 2D. So just for those who like to know a little bit about the well poseness. Uh, it's not so easy to prove lo local well posedness. So the first result goes back to Shiara in, in 2004. He had local well posedness in H3. And then Koch and So <laughs> went down with uh, lower Sobolev. And then more recently, there were two teams of, of researchers who proved local well posedness. Uh, so Grande, Koyani, Stafilani they proved local well poseness in H1, and they proved ill poseness for lower than uh, H, uh, that L2. And on the other hand, that is this group, uh, Mozanka Piloso, they proved global well poseness and scattering for small data in L2. So in a sense, this is sharp. If you compare, uh, if you once use the, this result, you can, one can, pardon? Oh, global well poseness. <laughs> global well poseness, local well poseness. <laughs> okay, so as I said, uh, as unlike uh, the classical DIST is not known to be Hamiltonian, but uh, these two uh, researchers, Gramstadt, Trulsen, they derived the Hamiltonian version, but instead of starting from the water wave problem, they started with from a four wave interaction model from Zakharov. So it was the model that was uh, proposed by Zakharov and then from there because they got the... Okay, and that's a little bit of a comment that uh, from a modeling and numerical point of view, keeping the structural properties and in particular energy conservation might be useful. So I will show you some pictures by comparing numerical simulation of the full Euler against uh, the classical and the Hamiltonian dist. And then I will show uh, nice pictures about uh, the influence of the vorticity on the, on, uh, the di uh, on Benjamin fear instability. So, we w so depending on the sign of the vorticity, the current that is created can be favorable. Favorable means that it is it goes in the same direction as the wave, the move, movement of the wave. And in this case it will it will make the the, the wave more less stiff, I mean more more regular, wider and less high. And if it's a f unfavorable current, then it will uh, it will steepen the wave. So we can check that with a uh, by studying the Benjamin fear instability. Okay, so this is this is uh, just uh, the, the Hamiltonian data. Like that's the same as this one, probably without less uh, mistakes. But this is the 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 disk that we just derived. And but there is also a disk in that corresponds to 3D deep water waves. So you see. Uh, if we forget the second line, this is the usual NLS equation 
uh, for deep water. In particular, you see the character, the ellipt uh, hyperbolic character of the second order. That's what happens. It's not when you do the uh, NLS um, uh, modulation on that for the 3D water wave in deep water. This is the equation that one ob obtained. So this is uh, mathematically this understanding the the, s the global well poseness is is an open problem. It's a very hard problem. Nobody has done anything. Okay, but uh, then if you interesting in, in a higher approximation, this is the dispersion a higher order, and there are terms of the form there are two uh, three two terms. I mean, third derivative in, in third derivative involving derivative in x and y, and and this non-local term is still there. So you this uh, this d minus one is in fact in both direction. Okay. So that's the non-local term that comes up in two dimension. Okay. And so I will show you uh, so this, these numerical simulations for the 2D water wave. It will be a pseudo spectral me method based on FFT, and in particular, uh, uh, based on the work of Guyen and Nichols, the, the Dirichlet Neumann will be expanded. I think they take about five, six terms in, in the expansion of the Dirichlet Neumann. And okay, that's uh, standard. But uh, it's not so. On one hand, there is uh, the numerical simulation of Euler, and then there is a, the construction of this approximate so solution. So, in in the case of the of the classical dist, uh, from uh, from the solution obtained by 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 uh, the dist equation. One need to have a con reconstruction. So, in the in that case, the classical way is to use uh, Stokes expansion. So the so in the in the so this the classical this to cons from the solution of the classical this to get the uh, the surface elevation. One uh, use is you, you see this is typically a Stokes wave, but uh, the calculation is done. So it's a perturbative expansion. But in the context of the of this derivation here, using this normal form, we have to invert the Burgers equation, right? Because we have to. So it's a it's a non-local um, it's a non-local construction. It, it's not a, it's not a perturbative uh, one. Okay, so. Solve the Burgers equation and reconstruct all these transformations that were done. Okay, so that's a preparation. So this is sim very simple. We took uh, essentially uh, s s uh, perturbed Stokes waves, and the blue corresponds to the Hamiltonian, the red corresponds to the classical dist, and the black corresponds to the prediction of Euler. So it's comparable. It's comparable. <coughs> and this is the relative errors. So the <laughs> look, 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 look that the red is a little bit less good than the blue, but uh, the relative error is of L2 norm and, and the Hamilton, oh, L infinity and then L2. And this is for a little higher uh, perturbation of, of Stokes waves, so a higher coefficient. and. It is kind of comparable with the blue and the, and the red, but uh, so that was just okay. for for relatively more steep uh, waves, and that corresponds to the 3D problem. So maybe that's a little bit less interesting, but again, blue and and red, and this is a higher uh, f waves, uh, a little bit more steep. So of course, when it is too steep, the approximation is not very good, but uh, that's normal. 
So essentially, the blue and black against the black is the Euler against um, the dist, uh, Hamiltonian dist, and this is, well, of course, these are, are really bad, but up to here, it's not so bad. But it is known that, of course, we cannot use uh, the 3D instabilities will become dominant once the uh, steepness is too large. But it's still not too bad. So that's uh, the 3D layer against uh, this 2D. And uh, here, I would like to, without uh, making it too, too heavy, uh, would like to uh, discuss the same procedure, but in the setting of the water wave problem with non-zero vorticity, so it goes very well with, with Robin's talk this morning, uh, that, uh, that corresponds, that are important if you're in interested in, in currents, in, uh, influence of currents on propagation of waves. Okay, <coughs> so in general, if you want to, if, you, if, if one has non-zero vorticity, uh, it is not possible to, to, uh, to describe the, the, the evolution with variable defined on the surface only, it has to be coupled with vorticity field, vorticity field inside the domain. Uh, so, there are many people have worked. There is uh, here these models of rotational waves by Castro Lan and Richard Gavriluk. And uh, there has been a lot of work with constant vorticity because it simplifies the problem. And uh, in your, you know, if you look, uh, so it corresponds to a horizontal shear. So horizontal shear, so it's a, a velocity a, a shear that is goes horizontally, and it is linear in the vertical direction as we've seen before. And in you know, in the original papers, uh, the argument for constant vorticity, in addition that it simplifies the problem, is that when it is not so deep, uh, what counts is more like uh, the average vorticity, and when it's very deep, what counts is local vorticity, so essentially there is an argument that it's not so bad uh, approximation. But mathematically, it has a very good, very good uh, advantage. It, it's, um, it, it, you can, in this case, in the constant vorticity, it is like in the rotational case, you can reduce all your the, or the, more the, the evolution to variable on the surface only. And it in particular, I in a peu at about the same time, Eric Wallen and Constantine, they proved that indeed this equation are, are Hamiltonian. So that's perfect in our situation. <coughs> so, so here I just so this is what I said a little bit earlier, that uh, it has been observed in many situations, laboratory field data and numerical simulation, that the character of the, to the, of the interaction between the wave and the current depends on the direction of this vertical sh shear. And as I said a little bit before, a co-propagating current will, uh, will uh, flatten the wave while a counter-probative current uh, will shorten the wavelength. And people have different uh, uh, conventions about signs, but we, uh, so not everybody is, is agrees on, the, on, the, on their convention. Okay, so very, very fast, I just would like to show you the, this governing equation. Uh, so the vorticity is constant, so if it is constant initially, uh, constant initially, it will remain constant because of the conservation along, uh, uh, along um, uh, part movement of particles. And uh, we cannot use vorticity, uh, velocity potential, but then one introduced stream function, which is uh, satisfies minus Laplace psi equals Laplacian psi equals gamma. And Ga psi is not harmonic, but a little modification of psi is harmonic. It's convenient. And then, and then from this psi tilde, one can construct what's called the generalized potential, which is de uh, defined here. 
So the 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 y component is the vertical velocity, and the x component is the horizontal plus the shear flow. Okay, so that's again uh, uh, repeats the the convention because it was not the same convention in, in, in all papers. So for us, gamma positive is co-propagating and gamma negative is counter-propagate. So in this situation, now you're going back to, to the Euler system, the, it's the same as with zero vorticity. So we have the Laplace equation for this uh, generalized potential. We have the kinetic, kinetic condition with an additional term. And we have the Bernoulli condition of force, uh, balance of forces, but it's, imp it's here, it's not a typo, it's really psi. Psi, which we remember, is related to phi. It's related to phi through psi tilde, which is related to psi, okay? I saw this equation and then I was worried, but it's not a typo. Okay, but then, then uh, that's a very non-trivial observation that if uh, from, from this Euler system is equivalent to, uh, the, to, the, to the, um, this Hamiltonian system, which is written in non-canonical -con non form, as you see this matrix has an entry here, which is not zero. And uh, so the variables are the same the, as before, eta, the, the surface elevation, and C, the trace of this uh, potential. But one can reduce, can transform this system in, uh, oh, okay, so that's not yet. So H here, so you see H, the, the first term, I should use this. The first term is the usual term in, in absence of vorticity, and that these are the corrections, correct, correction due to the presence of the vorticity that is denoting gamma. Not omega, because omega is used for dispersion relation. So in these variables here, the, uh, the Hamiltonian system, but uh, it was observed by the, the authors uh, that I mentioned, that if you change the variable eta xi to eta zeta, which where zeta is a modification of xi by this, uh, this um, this term, then it becomes, a it has a canonical form. So it's very, it was very beautiful calculation, and it modifies the Hamiltonian a little bit, well, it's more complicated, but all these blue terms are the new terms, <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and the rest is here, okay? And one can define this operator dx minus one, because eta tends to zero at infinity, and since it is zero, you can always assume that it is zero at the ori uh, originally, it stays zero. So this, this, uh, this quantity are well defined. And uh, finally, in terms of uh, important formula, the d linear dispersion relation is the, well, is, is here, it's modified. So GK is the usual one. <coughs> And, and the two, two additional terms are the new term due, due to the presence of the vorticity. Now you remember the, the operator K3, the, the, the Hamiltonian K3 that was so simple leading to, leading to the burgers, but now it's not so simple. It's very complicated, but it's still, you see, it's still, a, you can still express it uh, as uh, you can still compute it in, f in Fourier space si simply, right? It's only product. Okay, so that's... Uh, and here, so it's again this equation, so it has the same form as before, except that the coefficients here b are more complicated, but they all depend on e on <coughs> on the on the coefficient on the uh, coefficients which are the choice of k zero and the, the the gamma. So it's very very clean, and maybe I'll show you now 
some pictures. So the effect of vorticity on the Benjamin fear instability. So uh, Benjamin fear instability is a very classical uh, notion in fluid mechanics, but just I, I remind you what it, what it is. The, there to, to NLS or to this their exact solution of the form of uh, in the, the independent of X are just an exponential I T I and um, and uh, the phase is related to the amplitude yeah B is P zero and B and here we left epsilon because once you need to once you want to compare the solution of the original problem to the solution constructed through this transformation, we have to keep all the epsilon and, on, and work essentially only in, the, in a physical variable. Okay, so what do we know? We know that uh, this solution is unstable. In, uh, it is linearly unstable uh, with respect to side bands, that is, means ex long wave perturbation, because we are in deep water. Cool because deep water corresponds to an NLS which is focusing. Okay, focusing means that the signs of the non-linearity and, so is it, the sign of the linearity and the, and the non-linear term of this is the same, so that's focusing, that's, uh, that corresponds to deep water and it is unstable. And now one, one would like to do the same calculation for dist, for this with, with vorticity. Yes, that's the, the goal is to do it with vorticity. So essentially you look for a solution, for a perturbation B of the, in the form of an exponential, sig E sigma T plus epsilon plus I lambda X, and you, we're interested in the sign of, uh, uh, of, of, we're interested in whether sigma is real, in particular positive. So, oops. Um, we, uh, there is a formula for this, but it's too complicated, so I, I'm just going to show you the picture. So this is, uh, okay, so this is, oops. this is the first picture, so we have to read it, so here is lambda, the wave number of the perturbation, and here is something related to this growth rate, the rate of the growth, and uh, we have two pictures. So. On the left is on the left is negative vorticity, so it's, it tends to enhance the instability. And the right is stable; uh, it's uh, it's the positive vorticity. It tends to to regularize the the wave. So how do we read this? Uh, as we so let's start with this the picture on the left. We have the blue curves that are written for gamma negative for a sequence of gamma minus one minus uh, well, from uh, minus zero five to minus three point five, and uh, expanding with decreasing gamma. So expanding means that it's more from uh, this is gamma equals zero the red as gamma is increasing but negative right on the negative sign it's more and more unstable. So it's more and more unstable, expanding curves with decreasing gamma. And so the other, s the other side is gamma positive, and we, as we increase gamma, it becomes more and more stable, okay? Because that's the growth rate. So it confirms the, the role of the vorticity, depending on the sign, it stabilizes or destabilizes the Stokes waves. And this is even uh, more dramatic. So ga this is gamma positive. And as we increase gamma, the instability does not occur anymore because it goes be, uh, below with negative alpha. Okay. So that's really the co the, the stabilizing effect of the of of the vorticity. And here is a, so here we're going to, co to compare, we're going to compare solutions of the full Euler 
by, by so to compare the solution the full Euler to solutions predicted by the DIST. So here is back to the Euler system, and one has to prepare prepare the the initial condition that will be of the form uh, that will correspond to a, a Stokes wave. So this need requires a little effort because we have to invert this operator k. But here we see that the evolution of the uh, of the wave. So the f there are three times. The first time is the early stage of the Benjamin fear. So again, the blue and black. Blue is uh, blue is the dist, the solution from dist, and the black from from the what from the full Euler. This is at the time where the maximum wave growth. Mm -hmm. So I it's relatively good approximation. And, and here it's when uh, we, at, th at the end of this cycle of quasi-recurrent re recurrent cycle. So uh, in conclusion, the, the approximation of this in the presence of vorticity is, uh, and, that, and this is done for negative vorticity, so the, the defavorable current. <laughs> Defavorable, so it, it's a case where it, it the, the vorticity tends to uh, steepen the wave. Okay, and what is next? So, so here are some reference, recent reference, uh, relatively recent, yes, of experimental studies of rogue waves in with in opposing currents. So. Uh, so an experimental study on deterministic and stochastic wave trains. So here they, they claim that um, the interaction, so that these are uh, experiments, the interaction with an opposing current amplifies the wave modulation and accelerates nonlinear wave focusing. It is associated with a substantial increase in the probability of occurrence of rogue waves for unidirectional and directional C states. Okay. And this is another group, uh, experiment study the of dispersion and modulational instability on constant uh, of surface waves on constant vorticity. So I think uh, this is the end of my uh, presentation uh, of, this, of these images. So they are not uh, so... Well A constant vorticity, I think they have, they, they must probably uh, impose uh, 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 con this vertical shear. That's the shear. That's the shear. Right? <laughs> yes. But I think it's quite uh, impressive, uh, this. Uh, this uh, And you see fluid mechanics, so they accept a lot of papers. Uh, of <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, thank you. Yes, I'm a little bit early, but. <laughs> <laughs>